In scorching conditions, warm-blooded animals must dissipate excess heat while preventing dehydration. Their strategies include number one cooling mechanisms. Sweating, panting, and vasodilation help release heat. Camels, living in deserts where temperatures hit 50 degrees Celsius, don't sweat much but use panting and a unique nasal cooling system to conserve water while dissipating heat. Birds like ostriches pant and flutter throat muscles to evaporate water and cool down. Number two anatomical adaptations. Large surface areas aid heat loss. Elephants flap their large ears, which act as radiators, cooling blood via convection. Fennec foxes have oversized ears for the same purpose, dissipating heat efficiently. Number three behavioral adaptations. Many animals shift to nocturnal activity to avoid daytime heat. Owls hunt at night in hot climates, resting in shaded trees during the day. Camels conserve water by producing concentrated urine and dry feces, surviving days without drinking. Penguins, like those in warmer Galapagos regions, dive into cool ocean waters to lower body temperature. These strategies highlight why warm-blooded animals dominate in extreme environments, but require constant energy input. So you can observe that some animals on Earth have to spend most of their day just eating enough to produce heat inside their bodies to keep their body engines running. But some animals on Earth just use the heat outside their body. It's easier for cold-blooded animals. Cold-blooded animals, or ectotherms, let their body temperature vary with the surroundings so. They rely on external environmental temperatures to regulate their body heat. A lizard might be cool in the morning and warm up by basking in the sun. This saves energy, but it means they're less active in extreme weather, often entering states like hibernation. This makes them highly adaptable but also vulnerable to extremes. Here are some common examples across different groups. Reptiles, snakes, lizards, turtles, and crocodiles or alligators. Amphibians, frogs, toads, salamanders, and newts. Fish, most species, including sharks, trout, and goldfish. Invertebrates, insects, arachnids like spiders, scorpions, and mollusks like snails and octopuses. Ectotherms can't generate internal heat like warm-blooded animals, so they use behavioral, physiological, and environmental strategies to cope with extreme cold or heat. Their metabolism slows dramatically in unfavorable conditions, allowing them to conserve energy. Let's understand these strategies by breaking down by cold and hot extremes, 